Oh. He's on, he's on. No, man, it's probably the Benito. No, no, it's not the Benito. Are you sure? Yeah. The Benito's strong, man. Nice! Hey guys, we're gonna rig this bonito up on a stinger rig. Anthony caught this bonito on the sabiki. It's like a little bonito, perfect size for catching a big wahoo or kingfish. Move the arms You wanna put the? And the way we're gonna do is, we have a stinger rig. It's a treble and a regular J hook. The J hook goes through the nostrils, like that. And then we just put the treble hook. You extend it a little bit. You don't want it to be cut. But well, you don't want it to be too tight so you can swim. And then you're just gonna hook it back through his back. That's explain why. So that, that way if he gets short bit, so he only gets bit from midway back, there's that treble hook to catch the fish. Because a lot of the times these fish will go for the tail and try to take out the, the bait's propulsion. And they'll just not get to the hook in the front. They'll take out the tail and just leave half the fish there to float and sink. All right, we're gonna get him in the water. Let him out. Okay, you lost it again because you're putting way too much slack in the line. Sure? Yeah. The Benita is strong, man. Nice! Yeah, you got some. Move this rod. Move this rod oh, out of the way. Move it. A lot of head shakes. I'm hoping it's a king or a wahoo. Wahoo would be ideal. I want it to be a wahoo. What is it? It's out there. It looks like a barracuda. No, I can't see it. No, man. it's a kingfish. Are you sure? It looked like a shark to me. It's not a shark. It I saw like it. A shark. It, was, it wasn't a shark. I hope you're right. That might be the biggest kingfish I've ever seen. That thing is huge. This is just a peak. Try to get some underwater. There's just a peak know. at the havoc that goes down when you hook a big fish. Everybody goes into game mode. And we're gonna try to land this bad boy. It is big. This is probably gonna be the biggest one we've ever caught. It's gotta be plus 20 pounds for sure. Oh no, this is a fucking 40 pound fish, dude. Look at the size of it. On a live bonito, guys. Stroke him, stroke him, stroke him. Watch out, Thomas. There he is, boys! Whoa! There he is! That's a fish! Woo! That's a big one. Here we go! Put it up! Let's go! Good job, nice. guys! Good, 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 good job! Here we go! Good job! Nice! Here we go. That's a oh. fish! My hands are dirty! This thing's a slob. This thing is a slob. Guys! Get, get out there and get yourself a chungus. Hold, hold the fish in the background. Look at that. That's not even the hook that we hooked them on. That hook was just flailing around, but that's what this caliber of fish will do to your tackle. So you gotta make sure you're rigged up right. Salvage the bonito or is he done? Check out those teeth. Where's the bonito, Danny? Where are we gonna salvage the bonito from? Check out those teeth, guys. <laughs> For those of you who have never caught a kingfisher before, those teeth right there, the reason you need wire, and you need to be really careful when you get them in the boat. You don't want to get bit by one of these things. It's crazy, it'll tear you up. And then you need a tourniquet. And that's the reason that we wear boots when we fish. Oh, I'm also on. We got a double hookup. I'm tied up. I need a gaff. We're a bit tangled, but we have a shark. Now we really need the gaff. Come here, come here. If it breaks, it breaks. We got a shark on, guys. Andrew's gonna keep this one to eat. These sharks are edible. It's called an Atlantic sharp nose, and you can eat them. So we're gonna see if he tastes good. Hey, what's up, guys? We're back at the dock. We're gonna clean up this big kingfish that we caught today on that live bonita. We're gonna start off by making an incision behind the fin and then we're just going to cut along his back down his spine along the spine all the way to the base we're going to release that meat from the bone and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom Next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna break it down to segments, make it easier to work with. We're gonna make this a segment right here. And 
going to start removing the segments one piece at a time. From the body. And what you're going to do is you're going to fillet each of those pieces off the skin like that. And that gives you a piece of fillet right there. Same thing on the other side. Going around that bloodline and then down and across when you get to the skin. That's another piece right there. And then that's the skin. Can I save this for the crab traps? I'm going to make another segment. Do the same thing basically. So what we're trying to do guys here is we're trying to get these nice loins, these nice rounds off the body. And it's hard to fillet a big fish like this all in one piece. You know, you gotta break them down into segments. So what we're doing is we're this fish we're probably gonna do four. We already did two here. We're gonna break this part in half too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut down, down to the spine right here, across. And you're just gonna work that meat off the bone as gently as you can, trying not to waste any meat. And you're going to come from this side and do the same thing. And just get them as close to the bone as you can. And try to release this piece off of that fish. And then we're going to fillet the skin after we remove the meat off the fish. So once we get this round, this one has some rib cage, so we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to dispose of that part. And then we got the two loins here, as you can see. Two rounds. And we're just gonna get the skin off of that. So you have bloodline on both sides and you have some spine here. You're gonna cut to the side of that to avoid the bloodline and the spine. And then once you get down to the skin, you're just gonna come and peel it off and you get a fillet like that. The nice round. And that's good for the smoker to make a fish dip. Same thing on the other side. Take that gaff shot out of there. Clean up the gaff shot. Where's the gaff shot? Right there in the bottom corner. This? I'm pretty sure that's the gaff shot. It looks fine to me. Okay. I think the gaff shot was on the other side. And that's how you get your loin off. These big fish, the bigger they are, the darker the meat gets. That's just how they are. It's going in the crab trap. So we don't waste it. I'm gonna use this knife for now to get through that bone. And do the same thing here. Get rid of this rib cage. Come down straight to the side of the bloodline. When you get to the skin, turn. And just release that meat from the skin. You get the loin off. Same thing on the other side. And then we're done with this side of the fish. All we're gonna do is rinse and repeat. Same side. What's up guys? We're in the kitchen with that Atlantic sharp nose we caught yesterday. And what I did was, the second we got him in the boat, I gutted him to make sure that he was perfectly fresh. And for the past 24 hours, he's been marinating in olive oil and lemon juice and this mojo seasoning that we got. And what I've done now is I patted him dry and we're gonna season him again and then we're gonna put him in oil and fry him. Hey guys, we're down by the fryer now and we're gonna fry up this shark. And the meat's a little bit firmer than most fish, but I think it's gonna make it good for the fish fry because they're gonna come out like nice fingers. So we're gonna see how that turns out. We're gonna lay him in the grease. 
no egg on this, just seasoning and some flour. All right, we're gonna see how that turns out. We'll get back to you when it's done. One thing I've noticed about frying shark for the first time is that it's way denser than most fish. Usually when you put a fish in the oil, it floats right up to the top, but the shark just sinks down to the bottom. Yeah, Hopefully the they top. taste as good as they look. It almost tastes like a chicken tender. Like it's, right. like, it's so weird. It doesn't taste it's like, like fish at like all. The texture is not at all like fish <laughs> in the sense that when you bite it, it like flakes apart. It like tastes like like chicken, like and then like you have to like bite through it. Like it's like chewy almost. Like like But chewy in a bad no, way. No, not like, like chewy it. in a bad way. Like okay. it's not hard to chew. It's like like it's like a chicken tender. Firm. It's firm it's like, like you, a chicken. It's firm, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like it's like it's solid. It's not know? flaky like a, like yellowtail. Okay. It's like muscle. I'll try some, yeah, let me try some. And the moho, like what I marinated in it, like the marinade, like you taste it. Like you don't even need to squeeze lemon on this. Like it tastes like lemon flavored like chicken tender okay. basically. Like lime Doritos. <laughs> like basically. It has the mouthfeel of a chicken tender. It's literally a chicken tender. Oh. It tastes like a chicken tender. It's 100% like chicken tender. And it has the mouthfeel of a chicken tender. <laughs> it, it. All right, guys. Thank you for watching our first time eating sharks. Leave something in the comments below. If you've eaten shark before, tell us what your favorite shark to eat is and how you prepare it. And we'll catch you guys next time. Oh uh, yeah, that's perfect. Let's go. That's, this is good. Let's film. Film. Roll thunder. <laughs>